Misrepresentation can may be defined as an unambiguous false statement of fact or law which is addressed to the party misled, which is material and which induces the contract. There are uh, two, three steps to be proven. So firstly, what we need to prove is that the statement in at hand, the statement that is given in the problem question is an actionable misrepresentation. For you to prove that, there are three requirements. Statement must be a fact or law. It has to be addressed to the party misled, and it has to be inducing. So the statement in question has to be related to some factual circumstance of the case, or it can be also a mistake of law. For example, there is one case where, uh, where the uh, there was a car and they were selling the car and they saw that the car could be driven with the uh, with a specific driver's license that the, uh, that the buyer had, but that was not correct. And since they gave a wrong information about the point of law, which was crucial to the case, it was argued that it was a mistake of law and it could be actionable misrepresentation. Secondly, it has to be addressed to the to the party in Slack, so it has to be addressed to the other party of the contract, and most of the times to the buyer, and it has to be inducing. So the buyer, buyer's decision of um, the, the, the other party's decision to enter into the contract has to be based on this um, misre misrepresentation. As a statement of existing fact or law, it's now clear that a misrepresentation law can constitute an actionable misrepresentation. The case that is important for you to know is Brain versus Brought, where the court um, argued that um, a mistake of law can, in an appropriate case, be entitled the mistaken party to set aside a contract entered into as a result of a mistake. So the remedies offered as a result of misrepresentation is to set aside the contract as well as claim damages, but not for all kind of misrepresentation can claim damages. And it's very important that you know for um, which particular kinds of misrepresentation you can set aside the contract or which particular kinds of misrepresentation you can uh, get damages. You can set aside the contract for all kinds of misrepresentation whether it's fraudulent, negligent, statutory, or innocent misrepresentation, but damages can only be awarded for the best three types of misrepresentation except innocent one. As we already argued, the statement must be one of existing law, but it can also be one of existing fact. But you, the very important thing that you need to prove is that the statement in question is a, 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 about an existing fact and not a mere path. Uh, what is a mere path cannot, um, if, it's, if it's argued that it's a mere path, it cannot amount to actionable misrepresentation. It has no legal effect and the claimant cannot make a claim. Carlin versus Carbolic Smoke Ball uh, is, a, is a case about um, this principle, that the more specific the statement is, is less likely to be uh, treated as a mere path. So if the, uh, the one party of the contract makes a statement which is not very specific, it's, it's something like an opinion, it's just a general fact, it's more likely that it, the court considers it as a mere path. However, if the, the statement is very specific, it's about the, the, um, about the very important part of the contract, and um, it, it is clearly addressed to the party in this slide. It's less likely that the court considers that it's a mere part um, and uh, more likely that it's a fact which gives rise to an actionable misrepresentation. Also, a very important con concept is a special knowledge. And the case that represents this concept is Issa Petroleum versus Marden. Is it represented to the different defendant, a prospective tenant of petrol file a station, which was in the process of construction, that throughout a petrol at the station was likely to reach 200,000 gallons per year. In fact, it only reached 78,000. 
And the case um, was about the damages, whether there was a misrepresentation and whether ESO were liable for damages. The Court of Appeal held that the statement was actionable. Lord Deming distinguished Bissett on the ground that the, the land had never been used as a sheep farm and both parties were equally able to form an opinion as to its carrying capacity. In other words, here, yeah, Easter Petroleum was a company that had a special knowledge of, of, the, specific, uh, of, the, um, of, of the very technical knowledge that the contract was about. In this case, it was about how many gallons um, the station could produce, which was a very technical knowledge that Easter Petroleum had, whereas the other party, Madden, didn't have the same level of knowledge and the, when the court saw that the one party had a special knowledge of the topic and induced the, uh, induced the other party, Madden, to enter into the contract, then um, it was argued that it was an actionable misrepresentation. Misrepresentation must be addressed to the party misled uh, through, through the direct communication of the misrepresentation to the claimant by the representative. And the misrepresentation may be addressed by the representative to a third party with the intention that it be passed on to the claimant. Inducement, important case about the inducement is Edgington versus Fitz Morris. Uh, it was found that the misrepresentation need not be the sole inducement, nor must it have been decisive. So in other words, it does not have to be the sole um, inducement. So there may be other factors that contributed to the decision of the other party of the contract to enter into this contract. But it's inducement of this misrepresentation does not have to be the only ground uh, on, on which uh, the other party decided to enter into the contract. After proving all these three grounds, after proving that there is a mistake of fact or law, there is um, and there is inducement and the and the statement was addressed to the party misled, uh, we need to discuss which four types of misrepresentation applies in the facts of the case. There are this, uh, the following types of misrepresentation that you will need to discuss. Fraudulent misrepresentation, negligent misrepresentation, section 102, misrepresentation, Act 1967, and innocent misrepresentation. It is important to distinguish between the different types of misrepresentation because they may give rise to different remedial consequences. All types of misrepresentation entitle the representee to receive the contract, but not all types of misrepresentation give rise to an action to damages. As we discussed before, the action to damages can be, um, can be uh, done for fraudulent negligent of the statutory misrepresentation, but it cannot be awarded for innocent misrepresentation. Fraudulent, we will, uh, we will discuss each type of misrepresentation in turn, and firstly, fraudulent misrepresentation. In addition to being a ground on which a contract may be set aside, uh, it's also a tort of deceit. The complexity about fraudulent misrepresentation is that fraud must be proven, which in practice can be quite, quite complicated. So that's why fraudulent misrepresentation, even if more damages may be awarded for fraudulent misrepresentation, proving it can be quite challenging. So it should, you should always propose an alternative ground rather than just say that most probably it's a fraudulent misrepresentation and there are no alternative grounds. It's um, recommended that you should start with the, uh, with the most serious misrepresentation, which is fraudulent, and discuss that, but also as an alternative ground, um, propose either negligent, uh, common, um, negligent misrepresentation at common law or statutory misrepresentation under Section 2 of the Act. In order to prove fraud, this, uh, the following case must be discussed. Dairy versus speak. In this case, Lord Hashel established three, uh, three requirements for fraud to be proven. There must be proof of fraud and nothing short of that is sufficient. Fraud is proof, uh, proven when it's shown that a false representation has been made knowingly without belief in its truth or recklessly. So basically you need to prove that the representative 
made the false representation knowingly or without believing, believing in its truth or recklessly. Either of these grounds must be proven in order for fraud to be shown. And if fraud is proven, the notion of the person guilty of it is immaterial. There is um, an alternative ground that you can propose in, in, a, in a problem question if this is uh, the topic of discussion. And um, alternative ground is heavily burned versus Hella. But even negligent misrepresentation at common law can be quite challenging to prove because it has a very complicated test that you need to apply called special relationship test, which has five grounds uh, and each of them has to be discussed. There must be a duty of care between the representor and the representee. And establishing the duty of care can be challenging. The representation in question must be untrue, inaccurate, or misleading. Representor must have acted negligently in making said misrepresentation. Representee must have relied in a reasonable manner or on said negligent misrepresentation, and the reliance must have been detrimental. As you can see, there are Five, um, five, five uh, requirements that you need to prove for special relationship test in order for the damages to be awarded under negligent misrepresentation at common law. Section 2 of the Misrepresentation Act 1967 is another type of misrepresentation that you can propose an alternative remedy for your um, for the party that you're advising in a problem question on misrepresentation. So this is slightly less complicated to prove as a, in comparison to fraudulent and negligent misrepresentation at common law, because you don't have fraud to prove here and you don't have um, the special relationship testing. All you need to do is that uh, you need to prove that the person made the misrepresentation uh, or the person made the, the misrepresentation but, uh, fraudulently, that person should be so liable notwithstanding the misrepresentation was not made fraudulently unless he proves that he had reasonable cause to believe and did believe up to the time that the contract was made um, the facts were presented were true. In other words, you need to prove um, that the person who made the representation did not believe that the statement he made was true. If you can prove that, most likely section two will apply. This statutory right has three advantages. There is no need to prove special relationship under Hedlund, and in common law, it is for the representative to prove the representative was negligent. Here, however, the representor must prove that he believed on reasonable grounds that his statement was true at the time of making it. The principles that we now reviewed are the main information that you need to know about misrepresentation, and it is very important that you review the slides after this session when you receive them. You read all the suggested cases and the principles that you see on the slides. How can we help? Simple, at Simple Studying, we offer Simple Study resources that helps you focus on the right information because key to getting high grades is not reading everything that you see on essential and recommended reading list, but it's about focusing your attention on what is the most important, what is going to get you high grades. Simple Studying, we have a group of um, time performing students and graduates who created the materials that are the most important for student law students to get higher grades. And 90% of our regular users get a first class. If the resources are not enough, it is highly recommended that you have a look at our additional service, which is tutoring sessions. On tutoring sessions, we offer one-to-one -one meeting on Zoom where you can uh, get some more, uh, some help, some additional help on anything that you may be struggling with in your legal studies. It can be applying your assignment or, mm, or even preparing for your exams. We have already helped thousands of your students to get high grades, as you can see on the reviews, and we would like you to be our next student to get a first class. You can join Simple Study now, and you can also join our free study groups where we uh, share very important legal principles and cases to read. 
Thank you very much for attending this session.